Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the fundamental premise that wrestling as an art form, as entertainment, is incredibly subjective. No two wrestling fans are, I think, ever going to be perfectly aligned 100% on everything they think is good or everything they think is bad. And that's okay. It's about personal taste. It's about opinions. And frankly, as we know, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one, and they usually all stink. Except for women, because their assholes don't stink because they don't poop out of them. They make rainbows out of them. Just saying. But when we're talking about wrestling, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. And we can knock on each other, make fun of each other, whatever the case might be. But what could be good to me might not be good to you, and vice versa. That's okay. And I understand the concept behind having some type of star rating system for wrestling matches. Because with everybody having these different opinions and different tastes, at some point in time, you need some type of generally accepted standard of measurement. So that way, if somebody's trying to figure out what was really good, what was really terrible, you have some way of really quantifying how good or bad something is. For the average lay fan that may not be that interested or that familiar with what's going on, you want to let them know, hey, here's a good match, here's a bad match. Here's how it should be done versus how it shouldn't be done. A star rating system can serve a purpose. It lets you know, this match good good, this match do do. But, because it's wrestling, and because wrestling fans, we are fundamentally morons, I've had problems for years with professional wrestling fans and reviewers and journalists specifically, and the way that they structure their star ratings. Like for years, I had a major beef with the way the ROH bots sat there and did their star rating. The average star rating out of five for a match on the card would be like three and a half. And you say to yourself, okay, it averages three out of 3.5 out of five. We do the math. It hurts to do math, but we still do it. That's 70%. That's like a C minus. That's like an average to slightly below average show. But yet, time after time after time after time, somehow along the way, that would translate into we're grading the match on a scale, or the match out of 0 to 5, but the entire show on a scale of 0 to 10, which is weird. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense anyways. But where the average match on the show was 3.5, we're giving the show a 9 or a 9.5 or an 8.5 out of fucking 10. How does that make any damn sense here? How does the math compute? Let me get my air abacus. That's right, it fucking does it! It's like, people do these stupid-ass star ratings and then have no standards for the ratings they are assessing. They're just willy-nilly fumble-fucking through it and hoping that people believe them or think that this is credible in any way, shape, or form. And, and it just isn't. And it's absolutely ridiculous how often I see people overrate crap. Like people will sit there and give an okay to solid match four fucking stars. No. A four star match should be really damn good. A four star match, if you had two or three of them on a show, would make your show pretty good. That is not average. That is not mediocre. That is not just above average. That is Way above average. Like, we can't even understand the fundamental concept and premise of grading damn matches and grading damn shows. People sit there and pump a lot of these matches and a lot of these shows so full of smoke don't seem to have any prioritization or hierarchy of what makes three stars versus four stars versus five stars. Like a five-star match, if your grading scale is zero to five stars, zero should be absolute abysmal drizzling shits Time in my life, I'll never get back. Worst match I've seen in quite a while. Meaning, not every match, even if you crap on a certain company, deserves zero stars because eventually, guess what happens? You lose credibility in my mind and probably hopefully in other people's minds 
Because how could so many matches be so damn bad? That makes no sense. Has to be something better. Sure, you might hear the minus five stars, but that's for hyperbole. That is for emphasis. Da, 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 da. But ultimately, you're talking about a grading scale where it's zero to five fucking stars. That is like the standard that has been set. That is our measuring stick. But you'll have people sit there and throw out all of these star ratings where it's four and a half stars, five stars. A five star match should be perfect. Isn't that the name of the game here? If you score a 100% on a test, a quiz, a homework assignment, something at work, whatever the case might be, if you get assessed a grade of 100 out of 100, which a five star match on a zero to five star scale would be, then that shit should be perfect. If you're sitting there and reviewing a show, a match, writing about a show, a match, posting about a show or match on social media, and you have absolutely anything that is to be construed as a criticism or a critique, even if it's saying the match was a little too damn long, you cannot possibly write that five fucking stars! Five stars out of five stars is perfect! This is like school where we're supposed to get a bunch of fucking extra credit here! That's perfect! Most of your matches should fall somewhere between a two to four star range. Yet we have people way too often, because of personal biases and such, will give way too many matches four to five stars, and it's absolutely ridiculous. But nothing, and I mean not, 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 nothing, gets more ridiculous than the star ratings from one New Japan shill, Dave Meltzer. Like, if I told you right now, that Dave Meltzer was a paid shill for New Japan, and you went off of his history, you went off of the way he conducts himself, the way he carries himself, the way he talks about certain things, specifically including New Japan, nobody would think I was off base. Nobody would think I was full of shit. And believe me, when it comes to me and talking about being off base and full of shit, I am that a lot of the time. Like, if we can't fundamentally agree that this dude acts like a paid freaking shill for New Japan, then I don't know when the hell we're ever going to agree on anything. But here's this fucking New Japan cuck, Dave Meltzer, clearly acting like he's in the pocket of New Japan with all types of biases. I get to sit there and do curls. I'm not curling. I'm masturbating so much that I've got freaking 18-inch Meltzer Magoo arms. Because I'm buddies with fucking Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks in New Japan and I love them because they're totally awesome. This dude, over the past year, the numbers might not be exact here, but you get the fucking point. In a standard setup, zero to five stars, <clears throat> excuse me, has given one Okada Omega match, I believe 6.25 stars. On what should be a scale of 0 to 5. But of course because it involves New Japan. Meltzer throws out all the fucking rules. Another match. Was it 6.5 stars? Even if it was 6 stars. Who gives a shit? You get the point of how stupid it is. It is. And then of course. The last match between Okada and Omega. Where I've talked about this. Talk about each time the star rating is going to go up. Where does it fucking stop? It's pathetically predictable in terms of Meltzer and his pattern of behavior when it comes to this crap. Like, how can anybody take this guy seriously? How can anybody view anything he says with any type of credibility at all whatsoever? Because clearly, if you were in a position where you were giving multiple matches within a year that happened to feature the same two individuals, including one guy that you clearly have gay love for, and if that's your stroke, Meltzer, that is fine. But at least be open and honest about it. Don't sit there and insult the people. Don't sit there and deceive the people and pretend like you don't have some massive bias towards Omega, the fucking bucks of suck, and New Japan in general. Because it's absolutely fucking ridiculous to pretend like you don't. He talks about this freaking match at Dominion. And imagine that. It is now, once again, maybe the best wrestling match he's ever fucking seen for the third time in like a freaking year. He gave the match seven damn 
damn stars. It's talking about on Twitter. There's no maximum scale. Why not? The standard has usually been zero to five stars. Why in the fuck all of a sudden do the rules change? Why the fuck all of a sudden do the vast majority of matches you've ever given greater than five stars happen to have all been in fucking Japan? Gee, I wonder why the hell that is. Seven fucking, are you fucking insane? Even if you thought a match was good, even if you thought a match was great, even if you thought a match was transformative and life-changing and life-altering, by grading it seven fucking stars, you are insinuating that you would rather watch Kenny Omega and Okada grapple with each other for 45 minutes to an hour than have sex. Now, maybe Meltzer is running low on the supplies of the magic blue pill, and maybe at this stage of his life, being married or whatever, maybe he doesn't want to have sex anymore. It's the Al Bundy type of effect. I don't want to have sex. I'm married to you. You know what? Maybe that makes sense. But for crying out loud for the average wrestling fan to me, that sits there and says, you're better off spending an hour watching these two guys doing rehearsed choreographed bullshit than sitting there and getting your fucking nut in the bed or the park or at work in the office or wherever the hell you like to get nasty. Are you crazy? Are you insane? It reminds me of an old tune. Meltzer Magoo. Meltzer Magoo. A new Japan cuck. That is who he is. Ah, fuck it. It doesn't matter. I blew the goddamn song. God damn it. It doesn't matter. All we know is anytime soon, Kenny Omega, Dave Meltzer's gonna fucking cuck for you. Seven fucking stars. Like, if somebody did that for a damn WWE, or an ROH, or an Impact Wrestling show, you would immediately look at them, mock them, and say, I can never take that asshat seriously fucking again. Because how the fuck is that even possible? But because it's Dave Meltzer, and this is the danger here, because people associate the reporting of news and rumors with actually having a credible opinion about wrestling. And this is even getting to the point. Yes, everybody has an opinion. It's like assholes. They all smell blah, 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 blah. But there's also a point in time where you start insulting people's intelligence. There's also a point in time where it gets absolutely fucking ridiculous. There's also a point in time where you act like such a biased shill for a product or a company that you can no longer be taken seriously. But because it's Meltzer, and because these New Japan fucking cucks sit there and live in this goddamn unrealistic bubble about how everything is great and everything is awesome, they will actually buy into this crap and believe this bullshit. And that's what concerns me, is because it's Meltzer, because he's been doing his crap for three plus, almost four decades now, people automatically associate that with having credibility. And if this becomes a credible thought, a credible view, a credible opinion, then what the hell does that mean for anything else? Look, you can think a match was great or fantastic, and that's fine. But to sit there and give it some seven-star bullshit, you'll hear Marcus Smart on here every once in a while talking about giving it a Milky Way fucking grade because it's intergalactic and it's magnificent. Well, he might as well fucking have at this point. Seven fucking stars for a match? How much is that company paying you, Dave? How does Kenny Omega's dick taste, Dave? How does Okada's ass crap taste, Dave? Like, are you that fucking ridiculous that you can't put aside personal feelings of friendship, love, and homo erections? To give like a viably legitimate, honest opinion. This is not viable, legitimate, honest. This is biased, seemingly bought and paid for shill bullshit. And when it comes to the star rating, specifically when it comes to New Japan, they are bullshit. Dave Meltzer is bullshit. And any of you that subscribe to this cuck ass crap are also bullshit. Give me a freaking break. If you want to say five stars, it was perfect. Whatever. That's your deal. Seven fucking stars, though. Imagine what Okada and Omega had to do between the dirt sheets with Meltzer in order to get that fucking extra credit. Give me a break.